First of all, let me welcome everyone to this first of two extraordinary meetings for Middlesbrough Council. Um, please can I remind all councillors to use the microphones when speaking and to remind you that this meeting is being recorded and live streamed. Can I remind members of the public that this is a business meeting of the council and whilst members of the public are welcome to attend and listen to the debate, they are not allowed to call out or dis disrupt the meeting. If any member of the public interrupts the meeting, they will be issued with a warning. If they proceed to interrupt the meeting, they'll be asked to leave. Thank you. So item number one is apologies for absence. We've got any apologies? Chair, we've got apologies from councillors Dodds, Goodchild, Halawi, John Hobson, Jones, McTeague, Rostron, Smith, P. Story and Nugent. Any further apologies? Thank you. Move on to item two, declarations of interest. Are we have any declarations of interest? No declarations of interest. Move on to item three. Can I ask uh, Councillor Rathmill to outline the reason for the meeting, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, the reason for the meeting is to discuss the withdrawal of the break, Breaking Boundaries team of Middlesbrough Council and the impact that this has had on the provision of services to support the homeless people of Middlesbrough. Since the service was withdrawn on the 1st of April 2019, there's been five homeless people who've died on the Middlesbrough streets. This is five deaths too many, and it's acknowledged that there have been productive discussions about this service involving the Chief Executive, Tony Parkinson, and the head of service, Mrs. Marion Walker, from the community protection team. However, there have been a number of uninformed responses to the concerns raised, which have been circulated in the media and social media. So on that basis, I've called the meeting because I think misinformation isn't helpful. I think it's a very serious subject. It's not one that should be trivialized, and it isn't one that should be demonized. We live in a society where it's quite easy to focus in on one particular issue and in this case we're bypassing the homelessness issue in our responses and focusing on the addiction element but again addiction shouldn't be criminalized uh, it's a proven fact and it's actually been researched and addressed with cleveland police and the police and crime commissioner that a study they've carried out of 20 addicts on Middlesbrough streets have actually cost the taxpayer on average of Middlesbrough five pounds per household. That's five pounds just to enforce and take repeated enforcement action. So actually in the long term, we're not going to achieve any savings. And when it comes to the homeless, they're not homeless by choice. It's usually triggered by some kind of trauma in their life. Um, it's not as a result of addiction. We're not talking recreational use, drugs that have continued because they wanted to party night out and it's happened occasionally on a weekend. This is to blank out some traumatic past. And personally, I don't believe that the approach the council are currently offering, which is increasing the number of street wardens and just looking at enforcement is sufficient. I think that's quite negligent in some respects because we should be looking at offering some kind of rehabilitation, um, some improvement in the situation and the circumstances that these people live in. No doubt we'll hear that the five deaths aren't attributed to the withdrawal of this particular team. Um, and I'm not asking full council to make a staffing policy decision far more appropriate that that's dealt with through the appropriate channels. What I am asking for is that the authority, we make a recommendation back to the relevant exec member and those who make the decisions to look at reinstating a service we no longer have that went under the Breaking Boundaries banner. What we have currently is a chaotic system. We have a number of homeless people for various reasons, not just addiction, although, like I say, that's easy to focus in on. Um, some of them are homeless because of 
their own chaotic lifestyles because they're illiterate, they can't meet the current needs and requirements for filling universal credit applications and the checklist they receive each month of tasks they have to do. And ironically, and I, didn't, I don't tend to make this political, I just think it's, an, it's a really ill-informed decision by central government, but most homeless people don't have access to the internet to complete these tasks and fill in these details, or a mobile telephone, because when you're living hand to mouth and you're living on the streets, these kind of fall very low in your priorities. And if that was your only priority in life, you really for, and the only thing that concerned you, you're really fortunate. But that's not the case. So as such, they don't actually have the ability to log into the system. They can't complete the tasks. They therefore fall foul of the benefit system, receive a sanction, the landlord kicks them out, whether that's private or social, they're back on the streets. That results in more antisocial behavior across the town. You look at increased shoplifting because people have got to live. People have got to feed themselves regardless of whether they have an addiction, whether they don't have an addiction. It's a basic necessity and there's nothing available out there that can actually facilitate it other than a voluntary service which Middlesbrough Council don't actually contribute to directly. Um, and that's in the form of the Homeless Cafe, and I think that should be acknowledged and commended because in Middlesbrough, that acts as a central hub for all other agencies to feed into and work out of. And the Breaking Boundaries team, as it was, actually used that as a place to connect with the homeless, ensuring they maintained appointments, ensuring that they actually fulfilled their obligations for the universal credit applications, it saw a transformation in a number of lives. It saw people get into steady accommodation permanently. It meant that they were able to fulfill the benefit applications, and that's those without the addiction. Those with addiction, it actually saw them go through the whole process and come out clean, because one thing we do have in Middlesbrough, if you have got an addiction, we do have two services. One at the very start called Foundations, which deal with people from ground zero that want to stop. And the Care Quality Commission rate them outstanding. It's very rare that you have that in any town. But at the other end of the spectrum, we have Recovery Connections, again, rated outstanding. But it seems to be this big void in between, and it seems to be the authorities' approach. That's where we seem to fall short. And I don't think the current mantra of enforcement, enforcement, enforcement is going to deal with it. Street wardens on the street is going to result in more enforcement. It's going to move what's perceived as a problem from the town centre. But where's it going to move it to? What's going to, result, what's going to be the result? Fines. Fines that these people can't pay. Missed court appointments they can't keep. They then get a warrant issued for non-payment of fines not attending appearances, and it's just an endless cycle. Should we be a contributory factor, or should we be actually looking at doing our part, playing our bit? And that is where I'd like to open the debate up for other members to come in with their views. Thank you, Chair. Right, guys, I'd like to ask um, if any of the members wish to speak on the issue. The members will be given five minutes on the subject. The Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Vice Chair, or are you Chair tonight, what are you? Chair tonight? Nervous. Thank you, Chair, nervous Chair. Um, thank you for that, Councillor Rathmel. First of all, uh, I didn't expect to make this point, but I have to do it. To be crystal absolutely bloody clear to everyone, there is zero, none at all, absolutely no connection between street wardens and homelessness and street wardens and addiction. Having more street wardens doesn't cause that, okay? But secondly, then I want to do is move on to my main points. I've got some really important points to make. First one is that drugs is the biggest problem Middlesbrough faces. Drugs and addiction is the biggest single thing that's a threat to health, it's a threat to crime and safety, it's a threat to jobs, it's a threat to kids, it's a threat to adults, it's a threat to streets. It is ruining the town, it is killing the town. Addiction is killing the town. People have died. Now, it's not just an addict, 
It's not just someone who may have been homeless. It is someone's brother or son or neighbor or friend or daughter. So we've got to remember that, and I'd like people to bear that in mind as I'm talking and as other people are talking. Money is really tight. Every single person in this room, regardless of political persuasion, knows that money has never, ever been tighter. Now, we are compassionate. We want to help. We want to grow jobs. We want to look after people with challenges in their lives, whatever they are. We need to do all of these things. But we need to do it intelligently, and we need to balance budgets, and we need to make it work. That's why, on pretty much day one, not long after I was elected by the people to come in and try and do some things, I identified that drugs was the biggest problem, and I identified someone who could actually probably be better qualified than anyone, not only in this room, but, but better, better qualified than anyone in the whole town, to try and do something. And that's the Deputy Mayor, Anthony High. Now, we should welcome input from John Rathmel, we should welcome input from Susan Gill, we should welcome input from anyone and everyone, especially people who are giving their time and energy and have a, an interesting and valuable perspective. But we need to retain expertise, and we need to retain a broad oversight of all of the issues and not just a narrow field. Anthony is the man within the council, to talk to public health and every single department, to go and meet great people like Susan and other groups and other charities and listen to them and work out the best way for us to intelligently use our money and create sustainable solutions for vulnerable people. Susan's great. Susan Gill's Cafe is fantastic. You know, I've, I've championed it personally. I'll champion it as the mayor. I'll continue to champion it. It is fantastic for the town. Uh, and well done, Susan. And Susan is welcome to input at any time to council policy. Susan's got a great perspective on, on problems and challenges. Susan's perspective is one of opening the door without being too religious, doing what Jesus would do is, is work with the most vulnerable and do the right thing. And that's a really valuable perspective. It's not an unholistic perspective. It doesn't look at all of the issues like we have to, sadly. And I want us to remember that, is that Susan and a charity over there, or me, or somebody else, doesn't always have the whole picture. And that's Anthony's job. The last thing I want to say is that it would be completely wrong if anybody in here, tonight, afterwards, on social media, in the pub, or wherever, if somebody used deaths for political gain, or personal grudges, or self-promotion. And I'd ask everybody to remember that. Thank you. Is there anybody, any other members want to speak? Councillor Waters? Thank you, Chair. Um, as you know, I'm executive for Regeneration. Um, you might ask why, what that, that's got to do with this whole subject. Now, for me, Regeneration isn't just about the, the bricks and mortar, the buildings of the town, the, the new business and investment. It's about the people that we have living here. And the most important thing that we do is provide the support to the people in the area that need it. Now, you will know that the Breaking the Boundaries team was centrally government funded, and it was a three-year pilot. That funding was pulled after a year. Now, we haven't lost that team. That, that team hasn't been lost by the council. It's been moved into another area. Now, the, the team a month prior to the actual removal of this was dealing with a caseload of 11. So three people were dealing with a caseload of 11. This is in February this year. Um, these three people were a total cost of £130,000. Now, they have been moved into an area um, with the NSOs. Now, the NSOs were dealing with 1,200, a caseload of 1,200. Now, already that caseload is up to 1,600 by moving these three people and amalgamating them two teams. So we're already helping an extra 400 people that need it the most in Middlesbrough. Um, we have, as a council, we have 12, 12 specialised commission teams that deal with the homeless, that deal with the addiction, and that's got a combined budget of almost £2 million. 
what we've also done as a council, the fantastic team, is a secure grant funding for another £1.3 million, which will help people in the Tees Valley area, the North East and Middlesbrough. Now, this money that was awarded is the highest in, in the whole country because of the needs in the area that has been recognised. And that's something that this executive and this team will, will make sure that is addressed going forward and we will provide the support that is needed where we can. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is anybody else who wants to speak? Councillor Smiles. Good evening, everybody. Um, so obviously, community safety falls within, to my, within my exec remit. So I just wanted to say a few words on the issue. Um, I've been to visit Susan in her cafe, and it's clear to see the role that she plays um, early mornings, late nights, day in, day out, um, to serve people who are in need. And she's actually the shining example of the kind of charitable spirit that we have here in Middlesbrough, and exactly the kind of the provision that the council should be working in partnership with. Um, after chatting to Susan, it's clear to see that she held the Breaking the Boundaries offices in very high regard. Um, the work they did with her customers, um, people with complex needs, often taking them to appointments um, that they might have otherwise missed. Um, however, the reality is that we needed to look at the, the whole provision. Like Ashley said, um, the Breaking the Boundaries offices had a caseload of 11, and the neighbourhood safety officers were actually inundated and struggling to deal with the demands. Um, as well as that, there was a duplication of roles, um, which first and foremost is confusing for the customer or client or vulnerable person, um, as well as being inefficient for the council. Um, so it was obviously agreed that these two posts would be amalgamated, and the functions of the Breaking the Boundaries officers um, would be taken on by the neighbourhood safety officers. Um, so I think the co my concern was whether there was evidence that the neighbourhood safety officers were continuing the good work of the break Breaking the Boundaries of officers. And I'd asked for evidence um, since April of that, and I've actually been given a lot of examples of the support that's still being provided to homeless people and people struggling with addiction. Um, so I think, like, talking to Susan, one sort of solution I suppose to the problem might be looking at kind of providing a drop-in centre, a drop-in session at the cafe with the neighbourhood safety officers. Um, Susan's looking at expanding the cafe um, to next door to help people with their benefits um, and I think that's possibly one solution. Um, and just to round up, um, evidence suggests that su service users don't always need just one service and often find themselves needing to access multiple services. So on a wider scale, um, what Anthony's looking at is um, how we commission support services so it's actually less confusing and there's less duplication as well. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Storey. Um, I'd like to start by making a, a, a political point. I know that people have often said we shouldn't do that. But I think that it's been referred to, and, and Councillor Watt is quite right to say this, that the government were funding this. Uh, there was funding from the government, it's now been withdrawn. And as a result, we're having to reconsider how we do things as a council. And far too often, we shy away from talking about those things because we don't think it's relevant. But if the government can find um, the money it can find to prop up its coalition with the DUP, if they can find 2.2 billion pounds for all the er mis errors and mistakes that Chris Grayling has caused, just as an individual, and if they can find six billion pounds to prepare for a no-deal Brexit, then they should be able to find the money to help us support homeless people in Middlesbrough. Because we are the fifth richest country in the world and it is utterly wrong for us to accept in any way, shape or form that homelessness is just a reality. That homelessness is just something that we have to accept is always going to be there because it doesn't have to be that way. What we need to do is to have a holistic approach and I think the mayor mentioned it, having a holistic approach. My view is that we need to deal with root causes of homelessness. We can deal with the front end, we can deal with begging issues, we can move people on, we can hire street ones and those things, and that's fine. That, that's part of what the council should do. But the main thing the council does, and it, when it does it well, and what it does incredibly well through the revenues and benefits team, is support people who are uh, at risk of destitution and homelessness due to universal credit. Um, I work for the Member of Parliament, Andy MacDonald, and myself and Andy have worked with people who have literally been one or two days away from eviction because of universal credit, because it's left them on the brink, because they haven't been able to pay the bills. But the Revs and Ben's team at this local authority have made sure those people didn't become homeless. 
They've supported them with discretionary housing payments and other support and made sure that those people don't end up on the streets. And that's really important. We have to make sure we fund those things. We had a, a 13 officer attached to the council who works with not just 13 tenants, but all tenants in private sector accommodation as well to make sure that they had support so that when they were in trouble, when they couldn't pay their bills, the council was there for them. It's about making sure that people don't become homeless in the first place and dealing with those root causes. Now, that's real political leadership. The easy answers is dealing with enforcement. That's easy, that's what everyone sees. That's the thing you do, you hire the street wardens. But actually dealing with the root causes is hard and that's what we should be doing as a council. The other thing I wanted to mention is that not all Tories are, are bad people. Um, surprisingly, might be surprised if he say that. Andy Street, who's the um, West Midlands Metro Mayor, he wrote a piece in The Guardian not so long ago that set out some really interesting ideas about homelessness, about how we can help deal with homelessness. And a couple of the things he said was that we should be looking at hardship funds for workers and encouraging businesses to set up hardship funds for workers who go through tough times. We should be making sure banks provide bank accounts to homeless people. And we should be looking to encourage businesses to employ homeless people. Um, and I know that's something the mayor's done in a previous life. We should be looking to do those things. We should be looking to encourage those things and where possible fund those things if it is doable. And I realize budgets are tight. I think we've heard in the past that people have been defined in this town as good people or bad people. And if we move out the bad people and move in the good people, everything will be okay. And I think that's divisive and dangerous because there are no good people or bad people. There are only people. And in this town, in a town like ours, with the deprivation we face, we need to make sure we support those who are most vulnerable and at most at risk of homelessness before it happens. Prevention is always better than cure. And I think that's what we need to focus on as a council. And I would like the exec to consider that in their deliberations. Thank you, councillor. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak on the subject? Councillor Hobart. Um, there's a famous quotation that says, a nation's greatness is measured by how it treats its weakest members. Um, nothing more could be true. And it's a way that this council can be measured, this authority. So let's put this authority into question. We know money's tight, we've heard the Mayor say that, and we all know that. We've been waiting for a long time for more funding. Totally agree with Councillor's story on that point. Um, but we're quite willing to fund an art gallery at a quarter of a million pounds a year. Now, where does that sit with this authority when we can help, when we can fund Breaking the Boundaries team? It doesn't look good, councillors. We've seen the consequences, what happens when the wrong message is sent out. We've seen what's happened in America. What's happened there when poor messages are sent out and that cascades right across the nation. What will happen in Middlesbrough if we send the wrong message out, how to treat the homeless? Um, I'd just like to say, thankfully, we've got a person called Susan Gill in this town who's been doing her level best. Um, and she's fighting, really. Um, she's treading water. She really is, the way things are going. Um, all I would say is saving money but costing lives doesn't look good on Middlesbrough Council. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cook? Um, personally, I would like to believe that if we are on one hand, handing out any fines or doing anything of that nature, that we are given the same level of support. And I'd really worry if those two aren't balanced. Um, I've met with Susan, I went into the cafe, um, and one of the things that amazes me is the amount of processes that she actually has in place. There are things there that I didn't even consider. And one of the important things that she does is that place acts as a point of contact. She will be able to tell you if someone hasn't been there for a couple of weeks and then you'll be able to worry appropriately. And I think that's something that we need to consider as a town is how do we get better at understanding where these people are um, so that we can direct services their way. One of the things that we could consider is emergency housing run by the council. We have the Brownfield site on Gresham and that is an excellent opportunity to provide some emergency housing for the residents of this town that we can control and make sure that it is safe for them and that they don't get taken advantage of by any unscrupulous companies or landlords and make sure it's completely controlled and we can direct services to the right place. 
Um, while I was there, Anthony, um, Councillor High came and spoke with both me and Susan, and I was very impressed by the things that he said. But I would like a follow-up on some of the things that he said, because when we talk about this team, which has been relocated, they provide a wraparound service, and we need to make sure that that service is there. We don't just want to deal with the addiction. We don't just want to deal with that part of it. We need to make sure that everything from the universal credit application to housing queries to possibly addiction is dealt with. And we need to ensure that wraparound care is still existing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morrison. We do have a duty of care to all residents of Middlesbrough. And you don't have to be a resident in Middlesbrough with a house. Everybody that's within the town boundaries is a resident, um, even if you're being marginalised. I agree with everything that's been said on the subject. I'd just like to take us back to the beginning where Councillor Rathmel referred to the street wardens um, and referred them as enforcement officers. I'd like some assurance that street wardens have a wider remit than purely enforcement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor High. Good evening, Middlesbrough. Firstly, I just want to touch on a couple of points, and sorry, Andy, if I'm stepping on your toes a little bit here, because the street wardens keep getting mentioned in relation to spending money on street wardens and not spending money somewhere else. Now, the fact of the matter is, this pot of money for street wardens is to solely provide street wardens in this town, and it has come from a separate pot away from Middlesbrough Council to further enforce and support that team. So let's be, let's be clear with that. Secondly, people have mentioned about spending money in other areas in the budget and that money should be spent in homelessness. Now that for me shows some naivety in, 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 in councillors around the fact that certain budgets can only be sent, spent on certain areas of delivery. So can we please stop putting messages into the into Middlesbrough that we shouldn't be spending money in one place and should be spending it in another, when the fact of the matter is we're unable to do that as a, as a local authority. Um, and we need to make sure that when we're talking about budgets, we're, getting, we're putting the right messages out there. So to go on to the topic that we've mentioned about tonight, this is a topic that I hold really close to my heart. It, it, it set me off on a journey 20 years ago as a 15, 16 year old boy to work with some of the most troubled people in Middlesbrough. Um, it started in Winniebanks and it put me on a path where I worked right across the northeast, looking at issues specifically associated to troubled adults. That includes homelessness, substance misuse, domestic violence, you name it. Now, I, if I can go back to when I was fighting and championing for improvement of services, I have the utmost admiration for Sue and what she does. I know how tough it is when you don't have the finances and you genuinely feel like you're fighting for what is right. And it's also at a time when we're talking about cutting finances to have these community champions, and I will call her a community champion, fighting for, uh, for the few and fighting for those that are finding it the toughest in Middlesbrough is admirable. So thank you for that. And thank you on behalf of all the service users that you have access in for continuing to, to push the good work that you do. So, um, but the reality around that is National funding that was once put into the local authority that supported these particular roles was stripped. Now, at a time when budgets are at the tightest, to have a big pot of money stripped totally from a local authority is very damaging. Now, that damage usually hits our most vulnerable within society. But Middlesbrough Council recognised that. And instead of just allowing the, the workers that were attached to the break and boundaries team to disappear, they actually relocated them into another, another team to further strengthen and look to provide some longevity to that role and retain some of the critical areas that they were providing within the town. Now, the call has been asked by Councillor Rathmel to review the break and the boundaries team, but Confusingly, he's also made reference to the fact that we shouldn't be just delivering services in, in, in specific areas. So what I would like to say to Councillor Rathmel and everybody else is that there is a review going on. And this review isn't just around homelessness. It ju isn't just around substance misuse. It isn't just around domestic violence. 
It's around the full collective, the full collection of issues that damage our communities and damage our, our most vulnerable. And the reason why we're doing it as a full collective is because, Councillor Rathmel alluded to, there, there is issues within the system. That, and I've identified that, and I'm working with officers now who are identifying that. And the aim is for us to ensure that moving forward, we bring a better model, a better offer of care for Middlesbrough, and most critically, we ensure that when a person accesses these services, they get a better holistic approach. We cannot just deal with homelessness on its own. We have to ensure that there's no domestic violence attached. We have to ensure that the substance misuse that they might be facing is manageable and they're, they're healthy. But we can't do that by commissioning in isolation because the biggest issue that we've had in Middlesbrough for a very long time, and I've used all my skills, all my understanding of this particular field, the biggest problem we've had so far is commissioning in isolation and continuing to commission where there's duplication of service. So I would ask, and I, pardon? And I would, I would just like to say, what we need to say is the homeless offer for Middlesbrough is one of the best in the North East. The fact of the matter is we need to be supporting Sue more. And I spoke to Sue personally around bringing commission services to Sue so they can access directly the key agencies that they need to better recover and better move forward within Middlesbrough. But what I will say is it's sad that this, this process has been linked to deaths. That should not be happening. Do you know, the, these guys who, who we're alluding to, we've yet to have any post-mortems from. So I find it quite sad that it's been linked to deaths because I've lost many family and many friends to similar issues. And I would not like to think that the deaths of people that I've loved are getting played out in a political manner. And just to finish, Chair, I would like to ask Councillor Rathmel, you, you made some statements there, Councillor Rathmel, about misinformation, um, not making this political. What I would like to ask is, moving forward, when you have contact with such community groups, the information that has been shared in this room today, you do have access as, a, as, a, as, a, as an elected member. So moving forward, can you please make sure that you pass on the appropriate and the correct information into community groups and ensure that in no shape or form is the information you provided used in any particular way or political way? Can I just finish? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Height. Councillor Higgins. Thank you, Chair. I agree with everything that's been said. And the way I look at it is we're all only two months wages away from being where other people are, right? And as I look around this room at the councillors, all the councillors, I'm sure that if we get together, we can find a solution because we need to find a solution. These people, whoever they are, they're in the position where they can't get out. They cannot get out. I seen something that I, I reported back to Anthony when I was in the town yesterday with my husband. And there was a, a pile of clothes and there was two people sleeping in these clothes. One was an older man, but one, he can't have been more than 15. But what pleased me, and I think it's because of, of what's been going on lately, is the police, whereas before they would get moved on, get away, the police were, well, actually, they did chase, chase the older man, because, you know, but the young lad, they were very kind and they were very calm with him, and he was answering the questions and they calmed him down, and it was really good to see that it was, it was working with this young lad. What we have to do is put our heads together, do it together, because it, it, we can't, you know be going off on, on our tangent. And some people doing it this way and some people doing it that way. It has to be done all together. And remember, it could be your son, it could be your daughter, it could be your uncle, it could be anybody. So we have to help them. But at the same time, I do understand, Mayor, that we have got a budget. I mean, well, if you can call it that. Um, <laughs> It's central government. 
In all of this, the money that's been stripped out of local government, not just Middlesbrough, all across the country, we've had this austerity for nine years, and all of a sudden they're finding millions and millions and millions of pound. I want to know where that tree is so we can help ourselves. But it, it's just so farcical. It's, it's, I can't find the right word for it. It's disgusting that they can sit there and say, well, the DUP needs more money so I can rely on their vote. Yet they're cutting, slashing the money where it's needed the most. So, you know, I don't often bring politics into it. Not very often. Um, but that's where the, the problem lies and we can't blame the, this council or the previous council because it's central government we should be blaming. But... As I said, if we all work together, I'm sure we can get somewhere. And I'd like to thank Anthony because uh, he has helped me with a problem. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I didn't really intend to speak, so my thoughts are a bit cluttered, if you'll excuse me. But um, I, I think a standee is someone that has been classed as homeless in the past. Um, I, I had a, a child at 19, and um, what is now my wife as well. We we lived with my mum, and we had a breakdown of relationships, and um, we were we were effectively homeless. Uh, we, had, we had a visit from the council, and we were very fortunate to be placed in temporary accommodation on Diamond Road in Middlesbrough. Uh, there was a lot of support networks at the time with benefits and tax credits, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I was effectively a teenager with no money and not, not many prospects for the future but because of that support that was in place I think I stand here as an example of what of what investment in in vulnerable people can bring um, and I think that that's what's missing I think that the whole the whole discourse around homelessness or, or around who to blame in society it tends to be the victims that, that are being blamed a lot um, and I think that's that's part of the problem um, we need to actually see that if we invest in, in services and people, it will save us down the line. Too many governments think short term. It's about the next four years. And, um, you know, at the moment, you know, there's no forethought in terms of homelessness people at all. I think there's a lot of decent people in this room. And I think that we're all pretty much on the same page about the problem. And I think that, yeah, we need a proper central government uh, package of support, especially for places like Middlesbrough. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Walker. Thank you very much, Chair. Very similar sort of life to myself, Chair. Um, I was homeless. I've been homeless a couple of times. And really down on your luck when you're younger. It's not easy to try and find somewhere to live. Not in this area, I may add. Um, but it's just difficult and it's easy to make the wrong choices too to go down that wrong path, to be led somewhere else where you maybe didn't want intend to go, but it's an easier choice than maybe living with what you're living with. It's heat or eat. If you find a bed, you manage to find a bed. It's not easy. It's better than the doorway, and it's easier to sleep on somebody's settee um, than not sleep anywhere in nice and warm and safe and, cut and not with the rain. So, yeah, it's been hard. I've also been homeless with three children, so, yes, it's been difficult. But I've come back from that, and it's hard, but I've had a lot of good people and a lot of help along the way from a lot of other good people. And I found Middlesbrough the most welcoming place to be with my three children. It wasn't easy, but I found a new, I got the help I needed and I found the benefit from all that. And that's why I, I do what I do as well, because I've always thought none of us are perfect. Any one of us could end up down the street. Any one of us could end up in that doorway. Any one of us could get addicted to painkillers because you've got a bad back. And believe you me, that's an easier choice as well. Keep taking them tablets. And the more you take, the more you want them. And the more you want them, the more you should, you'll take them from somebody else because your prescription doesn't fill the need. And I think that's what we've got to start doing. But I think we've got some really good officers. We've got some good people now. And we're going to work together, hopefully, all us councillors together, with a common aim to get things better in Middlesbrough. Don't punish. Let's help and assist and make sure that people aren't homeless. One of the things that really gets me, though, and I spoke about this many years in council when I first became a councillor, food banks. 
Why on earth in this day and age have we got food banks? Why are we proud that we've got a good food bank? We shouldn't be proud of that. It's blooming ashamed of this country that we have food banks. We shouldn't need them. We've got them. Luckily, we have got them. We've got a lot of good people who actually manage to give food and give, make sure that they're well stocked. Although just recently, one in Thorny, we got robbed of everything, which shows either desperation or perhaps even a callous, just a callous thief. But I hope to God it wasn't for profit. But please, you know, I think if we all vote for, for, for whatever we vote for and whatever your political stance is, just get better in Middlesbrough. That's what we've got to do. And make sure our residents are as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there any other councillors who would like to speak on the matter? Councillor Wright. I'll, uh, I'll be very brief. As a RE teacher, I was absolutely thrilled to hear the mayor quote the greatest socialist ever, um, which is obviously Jesus. But you'll remember that Jesus' most important commandment, or greatest commandment, was to love your neighbour. And it, it's absolutely brilliant to see the work that Anti High is doing on drugs and things like that, because it embodies that principle of loving your neighbour. We all, can all stand around tonight and talk about how tight budgets are. We know how tight budgets are. We know central government have scrapped that funding, and that's on them. But where there's a political will, there is always a way. So where tonight we need to find the way forward, it has to start with us. I think it's the first time I've stood in this chamber, and we are united that this is an issue that needs to be resolved. There is a political will to resolve this issue, and I'm very grateful that Councillor Rathmore raised it so we could demonstrate that tonight. But we need from the mayor and the executive now to find the way forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Hobson. Thank you, I'm sitting here tonight absolutely amazed, thrilled to bits, not because of the homelessness, but the fact that people all want to work together. How far have we come? This is wonderful news. It has never happened in the past 12 years that I've been a councillor because people wouldn't work together. And suddenly, here we are, all wanting to work together. And I think that is absolutely amazing. I think we can find a solution to the problem that we've got here by working together. And thank you, all of you, who have said that you are willing to work together tonight because that is a wonderful way forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there any, anybody else who wants to speak on the matter? Right then, I would ask um, Councillor Rathmelt to sum up. Councillor, I... Um, Councillor High went over. He went six minutes. I thought what he was saying was relevant. So I'm going to give you six minutes to sum up, if that's okay. Thank you, Chair. It won't take six minutes. I mean, it is very positive tonight's meeting. Everybody's wanting to drive in the same direction. It does put a lot of pressure and a lot of onus on the executive to make the right decisions. I think it's positive that both sides of the chamber are quite happy to be engaged. There are elements, I mean, Councillor High mentioned passing on information. Good example was the joined up thinking and the discussion with the chief executive, but at the same time, we need to rein the wagons in because social media can be your worst enemy and that's where misinformation came about because whilst we were trying to discover the information, it was circulated that actually to reinstate this service would cost the closure of a children's service uh, or a community hub. Now, that's misinformation and call me cynical, it could have been handled a lot better. It just meant discussion, open discussion and not one person's folly. I mean, I would like to see us reinstate a wraparound service. Um, I noticed Councillor Marston was quite correct. We do have a duty of care, and it's good that um, we did have a wraparound service. It's not about delivering in isolation. It's not about budgets being tight. We've heard that that was costing £130,000 a year and budgets are extremely tight. But actually, in recent weeks, we've got two director posts go out, which is more essential. Um, top level management or on the ground services for the benefit of the people of Middlesbrough. 
I mean, we've heard a lot of discussion about the good work Susan does, and nobody can deny that. I've been involved with Susan since she had this crazy idea that she wanted a homeless cafe, and it was only going to be one day a week. Then she got ambitious, and it carried on to five days. Whatever she says she's going to do, she delivers. But when there's an opportunity for us to actually pay a major contribution, get rid of a significant pressure on services, and actually retain the knowledge, because we're saying it, there's a lot of knowledge within the original team. There's a lot of knowledge that we can draw upon, but actually it was only when this issue was raised and in informed discussions with the head of paid service and the director for this service, that actually we realized that the information wasn't being measured, wasn't being collated correct. It wasn't actually being, none of the management had actually asked for the information, so how can we say that it merited a rewriting of a job description, essentially, and move them within neighborhood safety to a more enforcement role rather than supportive role? And I think that's where we need to be. We need to actually be looking at playing our part, a sustainable approach, and bringing in this uh, an essential wraparound service because we know it's not an easy fix. We know it's not going to be a quick fix. I think everybody's admitted that. But this allows us time to sit around the table, look at the options, weigh up which is the best way forward, but actually pulling the rug from under people's feet who are reliant upon that level of support, which by its own definition helps reduce antisocial behavior. It's got to be a positive move in the, in the meantime. I mean, there's a lot of reference to neighborhood safety team and that's where they've been moved and that's fantastic. But I shouldn't be in my fifth year to actually be contacted by a neighborhood safety officer to look at and discuss issues relating to antisocial behavior. Don't get me wrong, I welcomed it, but it was nothing that could be done or that couldn't be achieved through engagement with my neighborhood PCSO and something that we've worked upon, worked with for a number of years. So should we not be looking at whether we're getting value for the redistribution of a wraparound service? So on that basis, I would like a report because one thing is clear from being involved with Susan, the discussions she's had, and being involved in some of those discussions, the information hasn't been centralized, it hasn't been collated. A decision was made back in April. We've got an opportunity to repair, that, repair what could be potentially a serious mistake. But without putting that information together and without people going off making wild claims, we just need to get it down and bring a report back. So I'd like to move that we bring a report back to full council, looking at the wraparound service, the impact, the cost, and whether we can actually deliver on that again. And I'd like to put that to the floor. So you've, you've, you've made a movement. Is there a seconder? Excellent. So Councillor Athens made a recommendation. Um, is everybody in agreement with the recommendation? Just Council, point do you, of you disagree with the recommendation? No, no, it's not at all. It's a point of clarification. Sorry? It's a point of clarification. He's, he's, he's made the recommendation. Nobody's gone against it. No, but, no. No, no, but we don't... No, but we don't know whether the report is on the effect of the service being removed or the service as it was offered. Yeah, 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 I understand, yeah. We need that. Please. To be clarified, yeah. please. Yes. Thank you, Chair. For clarity, it's the, the negative impact that, that the removal of that wraparound service has had and also the benefits of reinstating it. It can be a two-pronged approach. I mean, it's going to give us the answers we need and it's actually going to make a difference to people. Yeah, Councillor. Is it, what is it you want to make?
So you disagree with the motion? Right then, we'll go we'll forward. See, uh, whilst they appreciate the work, while I appreciate Councillor, the work's going Councillor, on, we're going to go to a vote. I'll, no, I'm not asking for additional work to be carried out. All I'm asking is that the reports come back to full council for a decision. Councillor High has disagreed with the motion, and we are going to go to I'm a vote. I'm just clarifying that all I'm asking for is that the reports come to full council, not just the executive. Can all those in favour of the motion please raise your hand? All those in favour of the proposal? It's, it's not a motion, so basically, are they in agreement? What they need to do is, are they in agreement that the report's brought back? If they're not in agreement that the report's brought back, then it goes to the vote. So those that are in agreement that the report's brought back? Yeah. Yeah, that's the vote. Right, sorry about that. I am new. Can all those in agreement that a report is brought back raise your hand? Can all those who disagree? Yeah, the, the, what, the, the, the proposal's been made. Yeah. Council High obviously went against the proposal because there's already a report yeah. going ahead. Yeah, yeah. The work's being done. So what I'm asking is, Councillor yeah. Rathmel wants a report put forward yeah. with, with, with this, within this meeting. So I've got to take a vote. If, 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 if somebody disagrees with it, then I've got to ask... Who disagrees with it's it? Not, it's not on that point yet. I, I, we've had the, I understand we've had, just had the vote. I, I think you, you've already you've, we've done that. But I, I wanted to raise a further, just a further point, if you don't mind. I, 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 I think... I, just Story, very, this, very, very briefly, honestly... Councillor Story, this meeting, it, 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 that's it, we're done. I, I just wanted to say that there's so much common ground in the room. I think it's really unfortunate that we've had a vote and it seems as though people have said one thing and some people have said something else. What I would like to suggest, just informally, is... Could we convene some kind of working group with representatives from the executive, the mayor, from the independent group, from this group, from the conservatives, to get together on a small, small working group basis to talk about this particular issue as the review is taking its course so that we can all have an input in it with, because there is a lot of common ground. Council Hobson's right. We are all basically speaking from the same hymn sheet here. And what I don't want us to do is come out of this room tonight without any kind of resolution. I feel like if there was a little working group that could be convened once we get past the summertime, where we can all talk as a little group with individuals from separate, separate parties, and then we can, we can have, a, have a real forum where we can just input into this, because I think it's been a positive meeting and I wouldn't like to end on a sour note. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I think that's something that can be sorted out outside of this meeting. Um, it, it threw me that it, it, it threw me that, that, that there was a the disagreement with with what Councillor Rathmore said, and I thought we had to go straight to a vote. But obviously, obviously not. Right. Um, now that Councillor Rathmore summed up, uh, that I'd like to bring this uh, extraordinary meeting of Middlesbrough Council to a close. Can I just say before we go that the second extraordinary meeting. Will not be, um, will not go out live, due to the um, the issues that being raised, could be involved with an ongoing criminal investigation. It will be recorded, but will not go out live. Uh, that's the meeting closed. Thank you. <laughs>